Hey there, TMB. We are studying space again. And now we are going to focus on learning about the sun. The sun is our star and it is amazing. Really, without our sun, we wouldn't even be here today. It's so cool. This is a book called, Does the Sun Sleep? Noticing sun, moon, and star patterns. It's written by Martha E. H. Rustad and illustrated by Holly Conger. Let's check out what they have to say. Friends, I want to show you what this is. It's called a table of contents. Now you may be seeing more information books like this one here. Remember, there are fiction and nonfiction books. Fiction is a book that is made up like a story. Nonfiction means that the information in the book is really true, facts. And in fact books, there are often things called table of contents or index at the back. This is a table of contents and it tells you what is going to be in the book. It says chapter one is going to be about the sun. And chapter two, well, that's going to be about the moon. And chapter three, the stars. It also gets to tell you what page those are on. This is a really good place to go if you want to skip ahead. Maybe you just wanted to read the moon today. Or maybe you want to know about the stars. And you could just skip to page 16. Let's start from the beginning. Chapter one, the sun. Our class is starting the day outside. Look up, says our teacher, Mr. Cruz. What do you see in the sky? The early morning moon catches Aisha's eye. Look at that airplane, says Nito. Tara points at the sun behind a cloud. Good observations, our teacher says. He has already taught us that an observation is something we see. Remember, never look directly at the sun. Direct sunlight harms your eyes. Mr. Cruz leads us back to our classroom. He asks what a pattern is. Hey friends, do you know what a pattern is? You do? Okay. Tell me, what is a pattern? What a good way to describe a pattern. Let's see what they say in this book. Akiko raises her hand. It's something that happens again and again. That sounded so much like your answer. Right, says Mr. Cruz. Can anyone think of a pattern that the sun follows? Let's pause there. Can you think of a pattern that the sun follows, my friends? Let's see if your idea is the same as the one in this book. It shines during the day, Dexter says, and we can't see it at night. Day, night, day, night, says Akiko, a pattern. If it's a day, night, day, night pattern, what is the core of that pattern? Do you remember we talked about pattern cores? And we usually label them with letters. Yeah, day would be A, night would be B. That is the core of the pattern. And then it keeps going, A, B, A, B pattern. Let's see how the sun's position changes during the day, says Mr. Cruz. First, he shows us a picture of the sky in the morning. The sun's near the horizon, he says. Friends, before I read the next line, do you know what the word horizon means? If I were to point and say, look at the horizon. What's a horizon? It's a fun word to say. Take a guess if you don't know. It's always good to try. Let's see if that's the same as what it says. 
That's the line where the sky and the land seem to meet. So the horizon is where the sky and the land seem to meet. It says the sun doesn't really move across the sky. It only looks like it's moving because Earth's spinning. Friends, remember we talked about spinning. And what word is another word for spinning? Is it revolving or rotating? It's tough, they're so similar. Yes, remember revolving means to go around something. So it's not revolving. Rotating means to spin on an axis or a point. So to spin would be to rotate. Next, he shows us a picture of the sky at noon. We see the sun high in the sky. Then he shows us a picture of the sky in the evening. The sun is near the horizon again. It's another pattern, Alice says. Yes, says our teacher. Every day the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. So friends, you can go outside on a sunny day really early in the morning and see which side the sun is on. And if it's early in the morning and the sun is on one side, that side is, yes, east. And then the same day, go back outside when the sun is almost setting and see where the sun is now. That side is, you got it west. Does the sun sleep at night? Jacob asks. Mr. Cruz smiles. No, he says. The sun never stops shining. He makes the room dark and shines a flashlight on a globe. We pretend the light is the sun. Then Mr. Cruz slowly spins the globe. He tells us that our planet spins too, rotates. I get it, says Dion. When it's day on one side of Earth, it's night on the other side. Yes, our teacher says. When we are getting up, people in Australia are going to bed. It says it takes Earth 24 hours to spin all the way around once. What else has 24 hours? Yeah, one day has 24 hours. And we're learning a lot about time. So it has 12 hours in the AM and 12 hours in the PM. 12 plus 12 equals 24, and that's one day. Friends, do you have someone that you know on the other side of the world? Maybe you try to call them on the phone or on your screen, and they're sleeping when you're awake. I know some of you do. That is because when it's day on our side of earth it is night on their side chapter two the moon wow friends take a look at this calendar and let's make a few guesses what this is going to be about hmm well it doesn't have the month on there so it isn't teaching us the months it has some days it has some numbers and it has some pictures. Now those pictures are pictures of the moon. Let's figure out what this is all about. Mr. Cruz asks us about the moon. Can you think of patterns it follows? Patterns again, cool. 
The moon changes shape each night, says Tara. Sometimes it's round like an O, and sometimes it's only a sliver like a C. And sometimes we can't see it at all, says Nito. Why does it keep changing? Let's look at this calendar. Whoa, it looks like on the first and the 30th, you cannot see it at all. Then if you go from the first and move to the second, then the third, then the fourth, you'll see, we can see a little bit more each day until on the 15th, it's a full moon. Wow. The moon follows a pattern of waxing and waning. Waxing means growing bigger and waning means growing smaller. So if we start at the first, it is waxing until the 15th. It is growing bigger until it is a full moon. And then from the 15th until you cannot see it again on the 30th, it is waning or growing smaller. First, Mr. Cruz tells us that the moon does not shine by itself. It is lit up by light from the sun. Wow. Then he shines the flashlight on the globe. He asks Jacob to hold up a small moon. The moon travels around Earth. What's it called when something travels around something, my friends? I heard two different answers. Yeah, I heard the answer orbit. We, the Earth, orbits the sun. And the moon, it orbits Earth. But what's another word starts with an R for orbit? Is it rotate or revolve? Yes, it's revolve, remembering that rotate means spinning. Great. So we go on to say we see only the part of the moon that is lit by the sun. That's why the moon's shape seems to change from night to night. So that's important. It seems to change, but the moon's shape itself isn't changing. The moon rises in the east and sets in the west, just like, yeah, the sun, the stars. Chapter three, Mr. Cruz asks, what else do we see in the sky at night? Stars, say Alice and Dion. Aisha asks, why don't we see stars during the day? We talk about how stars shine all the time, but the stars are very far away. So their light is dim. It's too dim for us to see in sunlight. Stars look small, but they are actually very big. They are much bigger than Earth or other planets. They look small because they are so far away. What is the star that is closest to us? You're right. Our star is the sun. It is the star of our solar system. Mr. Cruz shows us a picture of the night sky. He points at a group of stars. I see a square here, he says. Does anyone else see shapes in the stars? We see triangles, rectangles, and many other shapes. You can draw pretend lines to connect stars, just like a dot to dot, says our teacher. 
we learned that a group of stars that makes a shape is called a... Anyone guess? Yeah, a constellation. What a long word. There are 88 constellations in the night sky. And here is a picture of some constellations, some very common ones that we may see. What would happen if we stayed up all night and watched the stars? Mr. Cruz asks. I'd be too tired at school the next day, Akiko says. Our teacher laughs. That's true, he says, but we would also see another pattern. The stars look like they move across the sky from, yeah, east to west. Our class has learned that there are a lot of patterns in the sky. We just have to observe them. Well, friends, I hope you enjoyed this book about Mr. Cruz and his class. And I hope they taught you something about the sun, the moon, and the stars. It's so cool when you can link two things together, like patterns in math and space and science in the sky. Let's do our handshake. Up, down, wiggle, wiggle, pop. Love you guys. Bye, friends.